what strikes me as interesting is that the possibility of explanations of what we think of as the biological kind, explanations in terms of function rather than in terms of the building you know, physics and chemistry, what you're made of, have come under more attention recently as a result of computer science. Oh, now, this, this, is very, this does raise something I'm particularly interested in when you talk of computer science, and that is the interaction between our technology, in the case of computers and philosophy, not just science and philosophy, but technology and philosophy. I mean, computers were originally constructed on the basis of a self-conscious analogy with the human mind, weren't they? But as they became more and more sophisticated, we began to learn things from them about the human mind. So our construction of computers and what they then tell us about ourselves seems to actually proceed by interactive growth. Isn't that so? That's right. The interesting thing about the computer case, if I can stick with it for a moment, is one might have thought that the computer, the rise of the computer, would encourage a certain kind of vulgar materialism. The idea, so after all, we are machines, so after all, uh, everything about us can be explained in terms of physics and chemistry. Paradoxically, the real effect of the computer on psychology and on philosophy of mind has been a decrease in that kind of reductionism. See, the thing about the computer is that when you work with computers, you very rarely have to think about their physics and chemistry. There's a distinction that people draw between their software, meaning their program, their instructions, their rules, the way they do things, and their hardware. And generally, you ignore their hardware. You talk about computers at the software level, and you wouldn't really be able to explain what they do in a way that would be of any use to anyone in terms of the hardware level. You the, there is a kind of emergence here, although it's not a mystical kind of emergence. It's not that they're violating the laws of physics. It's just that the, the level of or at higher level facts about organization have a kind of autonomy. You'd say this, the fact that it's following this program explains why it does this, and I don't need to know how it's built. I only need to know it, it can be built in such a way that it will follow this program. This is a return to a view, and if you apply this to the mind, it suggests a return to a view of the mind that I associate with Aristotle. There's the view that we are not ghosts in a machine, mm. not spirits which only temporarily embodies, but that the relation between the mind and the body is a relation of function to what has that function. Aristotle said if you use the word soul in connection with an axe, and of course he said you don't, you'd say the soul of an axe is cutting. And he said the soul of the eye is seeing. And he thought of man as a thing that thinks. Mm. 